We thank you for your promises that remains yea and amen. We thank you for our hearts that is willing and yearning to be like you, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you visit us again today in the name of Jesus. For as many that will be under the auction of this voice, oh Lord, I pray that you visit them. Pour out your spirit upon every soul here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word become alive unto them in Jesus' name. I submit myself unto your holy hand that it I speak to your children through me in Jesus' name. Not as I will, but as you will, O oh Lord. That your will alone be done in their life according to your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Yeah, it's good to be back again. So today we're looking at uh, Holy Living, Your DNA. Um, I'll be doing a quick recap. Uh, Sister Nifemi, I would want you to pass the mic around when people talk. So um, we've, we treat this topic um, when <laughs> Holy Living, Your DNA. When was that? Is that it? Yeah, we treated it a couple of weeks ago. So I want us to quickly do a little bit of recap as we'll be dealing with the part two today. Only living your DNA. So can somebody tell me what they understand from our previous message? What you understand by you living a holy life being part of your DNA? I remember we taught it, right? Let's be quick because of time. I think we're not. Where are you here? Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm thinking about that to talk. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, a couple of things I remember is that um, only living. Is it okay not to read your notes? Thank you. <laughs> um, is a kind of, is a life of liberty. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that you can act or stage or pretend to do. It is something that, because of what Christ has done, is now, like, is now, like, how will I put it? Like, it's, it's now part of our DNA. Like, it's the way we're supposed to be living, not in a different way, contrary to, the life that Christ has called us to. So it's like a newness of life we're supposed to be walking in. That is only living. It's now our DNA, not just um, something that is far away. Thank you, Ma. So by virtue of birth into Christ, we are made afresh, a new creation into him. So which means that we now have a seed of the Father in us, the seed of Jesus he said, whosoever is born of God cannot sin because his seed is in him. So the seed of Christ in us is what enabled us to live a holy life consciously, unconsciously, everywhere we go. So we said it cannot be taught. I'm just trying to do a quick recap on our message. We cannot be taught. It is a life. Nobody can tell you like, hey, sister, sister, sorry, what's your name? Sister Precious. Um, sorry, I like to mention this. <laughs> yeah. I want everybody to participate in the message. So it can't be learned. No one can tell Buddha Muiwa to speak Punjabi because it's not from, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not an East Indian, right? Is that what they call it? Yeah. He can't speak Punjabi because the seed of the Punjabi, uh, Punjabi is uh -huh. <laughs> not in him. <laughs> It's not, it's not in him. So he can't behave like them. He can't speak like them. And the same thing with a, a, a child giving birth by an Hebo man cannot behave like a child giving birth by a Yoruba man. So by virtue of birth in Christ, we become like God. We are like God. Because we now have the life of Jesus inside of us. So doing a quick recap to our, the first part will help us to understand the next one we'll be talking about today. So, 
it's quite a lot for those that are not here when we taught it please go on our youtube channel it's very detailed it's the video it's alone it's though we live stream but the video is always uploaded separately the messages so if anyone should tell you that hey for you to live a holy life you have to be poor you have to be this you have to be that it's not true because in christ is an is an is abundance we are created to have abundance we are created to have dominion so it's more like you know this things belongs to you why do you have to chase it do you understand so today uh we'll be going into provision for holy living one of the provisions that is made for holy living is grace praise the lord is grace uh, so that takes me to our test for today uh, romans 6 verse 1 to 12 Romans 6 verse 1 to 12. So we'll be going quite slowly as uh, I really like to go step by step so we can really understand. Can somebody read for me if you're there, please? Romans 6 verse 1 to 12. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? So there is always this um, argument in the world that believers can't be perfect. Oh, it's only God that is perfect. Oh, it's only this that is perfect. With, with all teaching only, only living as our DNA, it means that by virtue of birth, you have God inside of you. You represent him. So now, you now, that is now born of God, how can you continue to sin? And now you expect the grace of God. And the work of grace is different. What grace, had, what grace came to do is different. So, and that's what we'll be looking into now. Let somebody open Titus 2 verse 11. Please, if you hope on read. Uh, so before we read Titus 2, I'll continue with the test. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we also should walk in newness of life. Knowing that you are now a new creation. And there is a grace that is available for you to achieve that. Titus 2, 11, please. Please give them mic. Thank you. Wait for the mic, ma. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has Hold on slowly, ma. Oh, slow, slow, slowly, mama. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to who? To, to all, all men. men. Teaching us. You don't mind. You don't mind. To all men. Yes, teaching ma. us that deny ungodliness. Slowly, mama. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. And this scripture says that, therefore, for as many, he said, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Now, this grace is now made available to teach us to do what, ma? Okay, teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Who is denying? What are you, who is going to deny ungodliness? It's you not. or me? Is it there? Is there a spirit somewhere that will come and help you? You just live, continue to live your life without being conscious of what to do. Who's gonna do it? It's me and you, ma. Thank you, mama. You have to walk. There is a you that will decide to walk, to live, because the grace is already available, and there are things that help us. Now, I I say this a lot. As a child of God that has been called out of the multitude, when we treat the message salvation, I emphasize something that if you if you renounce the world, don't don't go back to be married to it again. You must walk 
a newness of life. Teach, the grace is there to teach you to live soberly. And what, ma? In the presence of in the in the present world in this present world thank you ma can somebody read nlt for me please titus to 11 nlt quick please let's open our bibles brian manuel mystery of feb pastor wale all of you read bible NLT. Yeah, thank you. But the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. Mm -hmm. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We are instructed. What did you read? Did I? We are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. To turn from godless living and sinful what? Pleasures. Pleasures. There is an ability. That's what grace has come to do. And now, if there is any prayer a believer wants to pray, Lord, Great grace release upon my life. Because when grace comes, it enables a man to walk in newness of life. That is Romans is saying. When grace appears to us, he's coming to help you and I to live in the reality of whom we are created to be in Christ Jesus. He's helping us I'll continue with that test. I, I put, I put this place. If you want to take notes, you can go ahead now. When a man experiences the grace of God, it takes you to a place of divine enablement that made you to live right, soberly, holily in our world. And the work Christ did at Calvary, it is relevant. It is applicable, and it can be worked with. It is the lie, it's a lie from the pit of hell that we cannot be perfect. Matthew 5 verse 48 says, Be ye therefore perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That is because you carry him on the inside. There is a you that lives before that no longer lives. So God himself in you is what is aiding you, helping you to walk in that newness of life. So, don't forget, the work of Christ on Calvary is what? It is relevant. And it is applicable. And it can be worked with. I'll continue with the test. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, in the likeness of his resurrection, we shall be also in the likeness of his Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That air force we should not serve sin. Did somebody read that part with me? Yeah, did somebody read it with me? Thank you, sir. Say air force we should not serve sin. Many believers are actually servants of sin. Because that's whom they are yielding their members to. Whoever you yield your members to. That person is your master. And when you believe God's word, it activates faith in your life. Because the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. That is the victory that overcomes is our faith. Now continue to read. Seven. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Reckon yourself to be completely dead unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust thereof when I read this I understand that there is ability for us to say no to sin 
we can say no to sin. But many a times because we, we enjoy to live in the pleasures of ourselves, like uh, New Living Translation explain it. We like to enjoy what we feel. You just want to live in the moment. And thereby we are, we are, we are tied down unto sin and its dictates. The life of holiness is a life that is possible. It's not by suffering, but by virtue of what Jesus Christ has done at Calvary. Now, how can you connect it? It's by faith. Are we together? How, we, how to connect this life of holiness is by faith. You want to share? Oh, okay. Um, I would want us to read verse 6 in CEV. I think I have it open here. Uh, Romans 6, verse 6. We know that the person we used to be were nailed to the cross with Jesus. This was done. So our sinful bodies was no longer be slaves of sin. We know. We know. How many of us is aware that the person they used to be is no longer the person that he is now? Uh, you do, sir. Can you explain to me how you know? Crucify. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My old man was crucified with him. Mm -hmm. When he was buried, mm -hmm. I raised together with him. You raised together with him. Thank you, sir. So, because you are aware, you live in that awareness of the fact that you no longer exist. It's now Christ that is living in you. Then sin will no longer have dominion over you. That's what that verse is saying. That the person we used to be is nailed to the cross with Jesus. So it is no longer you. And in knowing is in believing. I say it the Lord, I say we have a lot of unbelieving believers. Many unbelieving believers. You, they talk about Bible, but yet they tell you, you cannot achieve this. You are just, we know it is written, but it's unattainable. Nobody can, uh, uh, you want to kill us? No. Nah. And it's a very sweet life, actually. Because it comes with peace. It comes with joy. It separates man from the world. It gives you a clean, a clean, a clean, let me use the word, uh, a clean garment. You don't, need to, you don't need to tell people about yourself before they know who you are. Because it is a life that you live. Now, I made it. I said, if you that used to live is dead, you must ask yourself, who is living now? Who is living now? The mystery of the gospel has been omitted in our teaching and in our practice. Who is living now? Who is living now? If you, if you believe you are dead, who is living? How is he living? <laughs> um <laughs> so it's it's very interesting when we see people declare a decree oh christ in me the hope of glory oh it's christ that lives in me it is no longer high that live but in reality who is living in reality, who is living? That's that's a question I want you to like. At every point in your life, when you go out, you know when we say you key into only living by faith. And whenever you are faced with anything that has to do with the old man, you ask yourself, who is living? Christ. And at that point, the old man is sealed. The old man is silenced. And Christ Himself. Will now reveal himself through you. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Yeah. Thank you, Papa. So, uh, Galatians 2:20, a fast reader, please. Galatians 2:20. Okay. I like to really go slow when it comes to message. <laughs> Just uh.
I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Thank you, Ma. I have been crucified in Christ. I no longer live. Christ live in me. Ah, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. If Bramuiwa come today now, everybody knows him to be Bramuiwa. We see his body. If he used to be like he used to be, like um, a, a, let me use the word, I'm sorry, I, that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. And if that is it, it has died, that old man is dead, you will no longer go back to him. Let's assume he used to be like a promiscuous person, who, uh, drunkard, someone who go like that. And people know him to be that person, right? And he comes again. A new man. When he comes, people still see him. Who would they say has arrived? Because the old man is what they are saying. But there is something that would make people to know. Even if they don't know. Like there is something that would give you peace of mind. That would create an assurance of a new life. It's the fruits that would come out of you. The life of Jesus coming out of you. Is what we show. And this makes me put this. Uh, the body is what man see. But there is a man that dominates it on the inside. Which you can't see. But can be seen. Through his works. That that man is dead. But then sin has lost power over the dead. There is a man that can't be seen. Which is a man. Jesus. But he can see him through his works. Let's assume. People know that when they like. Insult you say things at you, you respond angrily, you like freak out and you just walk away. And then next time again, they did the same thing to you and they're like, oh, as usual. And then as usual, just go like, thank you, I'm sorry. Like, uh -uh. What's going on? <laughs> it's the walks they are now seeing. And these things are very, they are like, they are lives I have seen. There are things, there are things I can testify to. It becomes a life. It becomes it becomes a pattern. Even if you respond according to the old man, the spirit of God in you will not make you, like you will not rest until you go back and do the right thing that you should do as a child of God. You will be forced, like you will not you will have peace of mind until you go back and say, I am sorry. That is not how I should have behaved. And at that point, it is Christ. They are seen. And men begin to wonder what has happened to her. What has happened to him? So, because sin has lost power over that life. Sin no longer have dominion over that soul. So now, oh, the new occupants of your life, the new occupants of your life now is who? We we'll go to Colossians 3, please. Colossians 3 will be reading verse 1 to 4. The new occupant of your life will now be who? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Many believers don't even understand what it means to be born again. Many Christians are living like, I'll use the word day-to-day -day devotions. When you are seeking things that are above, it's like your, your own heart is focused on Jesus. And verse 2 said that, set your affections on things above and not on things below. How true is that and how possible? Very true and very possible. Everywhere you go, workplace, anywhere, you don't have to like be like uh, shouting tongues, uh, carrying your Bible. Or let's be... It is a life, don't forget. You are representing Jesus. Your day-to-day your, your day -day thinking your um your lifestyle everywhere you have your mind is focused on 
Jesus. If there's any meditation going on in your head, it's spiritual songs. Songs that align you to the kingdom of God. If there's anything going on in your mind, even though you have this, he said, in this world, you will have tribulations. I want us to understand something. You as a child of God cannot live on your own problems because you have God. So when they come like that, you want to keep your hearts back on God, keeping it focused on Jesus because that's the man dominating you on the inside and you can't afford to be careless. You can't afford to take your mind away from him. Then the devil will come and attack you like that. Because it's moving around everywhere, always. And um, that takes me back to, okay, we're still on Colossians. Verse 3 says that, For ye are dead, and your life is eating who? Hello, can I hear? Is eat with Christ in God. How can a life that is eat in Christ with God not show God. Do you, do you understand my point? Like that life would ref, will reflect God by default. It would reflect God. If there is a man that used to fornicate, death has occurred on that man. That man no longer fornicates. If there is a man that do lies, death has occurred. If there is a man that gets angry, death has occurred on that man. If there is a man that knows how to keep malice, I know Christians in the same church, they'll be keeping malice with each other. In the same church, in the same gathering. If there is a man that loves to keep malice, death has occurred upon that man's life and we no longer see that man who are we seeing jesus the man of calvary is who men now see by virtue of death in christ many people will find it hard to believe that you are dead but you must remain in your own reality Many people will find it. Uh, uh, do you know the testimony about Saul of Tarsus, our great apostle Paul? People were amazed. A man even goes and said, You are mad. He said, You. They are like, uh, uh, This man. Many people would be dazed. They would be amazed. Look at the testimony about uh, bro, Brother Peter and who, with their Sandra brother. They were coming and they said, These are the men that have stoned the world around. Just two. Two. And we have like millions of believers without life. Ha. Huh. That's why I said that church, I don't want it to be a routine in my life. I want to be a continual. Uh, I want to express a life that continually reflects God. A life that shows people Jesus. A life that when men encounter they are drawn to know the man of Calvary. They ask questions. How do you do it? It's the Lord's. It's no longer high who lives, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God. And is it your business that you have to convince people that you are now a new creation? Do you have to worry about that? No. You don't need to. It's going to take them forever. If they have Jesus in their midst and they could not recognize Jesus, is it you now they will not recognize? Ha! Huh? No! It's not your business. You just need to focus on your own path, your own race. Live for Jesus. The same body that has been used by Mr. Flesh, Christ now chose to dominate it. Do you know how glorious that is? We've had sisters that has, they, they said they've, been, they've lived their life recklessly and when they come to the Lord, people go like, and I've, I read it online, many even Christian brothers will say, with how many body counts she has had, me, I will now marry her. Ask them, how many body counts have you also removed? 
but they will not understand that they also contributed to the body counting but because they are men they they sit in that seat of she had one million body count it doesn't matter what you have been it doesn't matter who your life has been it doesn't matter what has happened to your body it doesn't matter what you have used your life to be no matter how bad you have gone how deep you have gone though your sins they are as great as what i shall make it white as what god chose you to jesus came from the tribe from the line of rahab the prostitutes and they, you didn't know <laughs> your face <laughs> your face, your face. I read from the book of uh, John. The people asking themselves, "Can anything good come from here?" This is what they will say. They will look at ah, this person. Ah, ah, without their, you can't even hear them because whoever, whoever, whoever they are talking to is who is dead. I told people, I said, if you want to fight me, you're fighting Jesus too. Because I will not even see you. If you are keeping malice, will you keep malice with Jesus? If I have the opportunity, I'll come and kneel down and beg you. Don't keep malice. It's not good. You will not take us anywhere. Let's just be brethren and, and be happy. You know, that's how we should be as believers. But look at yourself and say, God chose to dominate my body. He chose to use this body again for his own glory. And that glory cannot be under mind. It cannot be ridiculed. It's not your business. What happens to that body? You just yield it to the Lord. Submit it to him. And see how powerfully he would magnify himself through that body. I have been this, I have been that, I have done this, I have done that. It's not your business. It's nothing to worry about. You are now a new creation in Christ and now you are carrying Jesus. His righteousness is now your own righteousness. So this is the heritage of the Lord and their righteousness is of me. You need to worry over nothing. A true Christian is one who has Christ living inside of him. You don't go about like acting. I, I know many, I've seen many people who act it. I, I call it conformed holiness. They're very theatrical in nature, in nature. You see them, they just come like that. Hey, we're done. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, little offense. You imagine. Uh -uh. Is there no room for offense again? <laughs> Can't we offend ourselves and just say sorry and let it be over? Bible even says that give no room for offense. That's what the word of God said. But when men just read letters, it does not profit them. It profits them nothing. But when you read the word of God to be transformed thereby, it becomes alive in you. And that transforms you, it gives you the life of Jesus. That men begin to see. Amen. So I want to tell all our ministers, our workers, it is no longer you who sings, but we sing it through you. Christ. Brother Emmanuel, ah, Pastor Wale, Mr. Ori of Brother Emmanuel, it is no longer Christ who is preaching. I mean, it is no longer you who is preaching. Who is preaching in you? Christ. The word of God that you profess, who is saying it? Jesus. We have to live in that reality. We have to be in that reality. When you want to relate with men, it is not you who does it, but who? Christ. Your life is completely lost in him. Your life is completely married to him. I felt it was important that we finish this holy living, your DNA. So that we can walk in that reality. When we are building a force for Jesus, we have a call for this ministry. And the ministry is to walk in alignment with the word of God. And that's how we can, we can actually possess 
our possessions and achieve all that the Lord has spoken concerning our lives. And no matter how small, but we will move mountains. Because what? It is not us who does it, but who is working in us? Can I hear somebody echo that? Who is working in us? Who is working in us? Jesus. Let's read Colossians 1 verse 26 to 29, but I might stop us along the way. Let's read real quick, please. Colossians 1. And that's what I'll be rounding with. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. Now those mystery is revealed to us. Now let's know what the, review, uh, the mystery is now. Mama, read on. God wanted to make known among the Gentiles the glorious world of this, mini of mm -hmm. this mystery. Which is? Which is Christ in you, the, the hope, hope of, of glory. Yes, Mama. We proclaim him. We preach him. Warning and teaching everyone. Warning and teaching everyone. With all wisdom. In all wisdom. So that we may present everyone. We may present every man perfect. This is our message. We don't have any other message. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The life we live, we live in alignment with the life of God. Christ in us, among us as a church, it's a guarantee for your holy life. It's okay to think about what you've been before. It's okay to look at yourself and say, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this sinful life? Check yourself and say, God, come on, make your life in me. Dominate this member. Dominate this vessel. Let it yield to you. Let men see me and see Jesus. I no longer want to be the one talking to men. I no longer want to be the one relating with man. But you, Jesus. You. So as we live today, I want you to reckon with yourself. That you are dead. Am I making sense? Praise the Lord. It has happened. You walk in it through what? Faith. God bless you, man. You walk in it through faith. You reckon it with yourself. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. And the life I live now, I live in the faith in the Son of God. And I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So this moment, I just want us to go to the Lord in prayer. I've had people say that I have to be born again and born again and born again and born again again. I tell people, uh, when you know something, where your, heart, your, your highest of understanding is enlightened, to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, it helps you to pray the right prayer. And it helps you to ask God to come and help you. It doesn't mean you are being born again and again and again. You surrendered your life to him. But you want to walk in newness. Don't forget. In newness of life. In newness of mind. That old man no longer lives. The old Adoni is dead. What men see now is Jesus. So I want you to pray to yourself and say, God, come and reveal yourself in me and through me. Help me to yield me completely over to you. I surrender all, not in songs, but in, in, in consciousness of mind. Denying every form of ungodly living, unrighteous living, and focusing my attention on things above and not on things below. For the things that we see, they are temporal. For the things that are up there, it's eternal. So tell the Lord, Hold to be like thee, blessed Redeemer. Let my life align with your life. Create a hunger and test for your life. Create a hunger and test for your word. Create a hunger and test for holy living. Your seed is in me, Lord. Help me to no longer sin. Help me to live in consciousness of this word that we are teaching. Let the word become a life in my life. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. 
Lord, help us. Help us. As a church, we pray for ourselves, Father. Help us. Anywhere we go, when men see us, they encounter us, they encounter Jesus. They encounter Christ. Because we are a representative of his glory. Our bodies now be dominated by him, being used by him. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Father Lord, I thank you for this word and I pray for your children, O oh Lord, that you begin a new walk in their life in Jesus' name. Create a consciousness upon their hearts that they remember every day of their life that Christ in me, the hope of glory. And it is no longer me who live, but Christ who live in me. Help them to begin a new walk with you, Jesus. Help them to walk in consciousness of who they are in you, Daddy. Thank you, righteous God. For in Jesus' name I have prayed.